Hello everyone, it's Shane Kanto, Your Way Slam Reviewer, and I'm here to review Studio Panok, which came out of the ashes of the now defunct Studio Ghibli, their first film, Mary and the Witch's Flower. Now, I'm not the hugest in the anime, and I've been trying to get into watching more anime, but Studio Ghibli films are definitely ones that I have checked out and really, really enjoyed, most of the ones that I've gotten to see. So I was really excited about this film, and it seemed to be getting a lot of high praise, especially on Rotten Tomatoes, and I was really excited about this. It looked like a nice, sweet film, and I'm just going to say this up front. Sorry that I butcher every single name of everyone involved in this film, but here we go. So this was directed by Hiromasa Yanabayashi. So... And this is so beautiful, this film, like, anything coming out of big anime studios at this point, it's like, it's kind of, duh. But this film is gorgeous, it looks absolutely breathtaking, and it really engrosses you throughout. Now, this film, the story's well told and balanced, you know where, like, where it's going, and... I have to say it kind of dragged a lot for me throughout the film and I felt a little bored watching the film it's actually a decent amount of points and that kind of disappointed me it has a very lethargic kind of pace to it which it's very different watching anime compared to a lot of American animation because a lot almost all of American animation has what I like to call kid pacing where it's like boom 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 because kids can't keep their attention long enough. But the thing is, this one lurches on quite a bit. and But it does have a very consistent tone. It does have its heavier moments. But overall, this feels very magical and endearing kind of film. And But honestly, I didn't feel super connected with the characters. And like the main girl, and I'll talk more about the writing when it comes to that. But the main girl in this film, I didn't feel super connected to, so I didn't feel super invested in her journey, but it was still a fun journey to go along. Now, the writing was done by Riko Sakakuchi and our director, Hiromasa Yonobayashi, and the story goes a lot of places, and... It's an interesting kind of idea. I've heard people compare this a lot to like, hey, it's like Harry Potter kind of thing. She goes away to like witch's school and whatever like that. And I think it is an interesting story. This girl, this idea of a girl finding this flower that gives her powers and her trying to deal with those powers, because that's a very common thing. And I've heard this comparison to superhero films such as like Spider-Man per se, who's given these powers and he's trying to grow and learn how to utilize them and in this one it's little girl and the issue I have with little girl is like she really doesn't progress it's kind of just like I go in this story and I come out the same kind of thing and you don't really get that hero's kind of journey where you really get that development and growth throughout like most fantasy and sci-fi films are trying to venture out when you're discovering a new world and there's other characters and there's some fun characters and I feel like a lot of them were memorable because of their vocal performances and not really hey these are really cool interesting characters they're goofy they're quirky but it is what it is and the overall it's like the themes of this it doesn't really hit super home this felt very superficial but absolutely gorgeous and that's why I'm leaning more towards a positive review for this than just it was something cool to look at. It was endearing, it was cute. The music by Takatsugo Muramatsu was gorgeous. The music's beautiful in this film and I wasn't expecting anything less out of an anime film where a lot of work really really goes into making breathtakingly gorgeous 2D animation and gorgeous music to go along with it and honestly the music is what really helped some of the scenes hit the emotive points that it was trying to hit now the vocal cast the little girl was fine and some of the more fun vocal performances Jim Broadbent 
played a goofy professor guy, and he was fun. And Ewan Bremer from Train Spotting had some fun being little Scottish guy. But overall, it wasn't like there wasn't any kind of perform vocal performances that like blew you away. So overall, the in fact of my thoughts on this film, it's slow and mostly surface level. But this film is beautifully made, and it has its charm when it needs to, and that is why I'm going to give Mary and the Witch's Flower a C+.